G'day folks, Gibby from On Tour Fish in Australia. So in this video we're going to talk about various beach formations. So in picture one, we've got a very deep gutter indicated by a steeply shelving beach in close to shore, a very darker greener water in the middle, that rippled moving water. We've also got a back sandbank where the waves are breaking out the back. Um, and how to fish it? Well, you want to be throwing your uh, baits or your lures right out to the back sandbank and retrieving it back into that deeper gutter. Okay, so in picture two, we've got a close-up of another very deep gutter, as indicated by the steep beach close to shore and that darker, deeper water by the rippled water in the middle, and it's enclosed by the waves breaking on that back sandbank. Great gutter to fish for Mulloway at night, or tailor during the day. So in picture three, we've got a beautiful low tide widening gutter. So to fish it, you want to stand well back from the edge because it's so shallow and either fish right in the blind end there, or you can fish along that back bank, just where the back bank drops into the deeper water. That's where the sand, the waves breaking on the sand will be washing the worms and the pippies into the deeper water. Or alternatively, you can fish right there at the shore dump at the break, again standing well back from the gutter. Alright, so picture four is a little drain or creek that's running out in the last couple of hours before low tide and stirring up the water close to shore which is attracting bait fish which in turn will attract flathead and it's got a reasonable depth of water behind it. So you can see there a great option is to fan cast either with bait or with soft plastics mm. around to cover the area and then once you've covered the area move to the next one. So in picture five you've got some birds attacking bait on the surface that are likely have been chased there by fish such as tailor. So you want to be throwing either your baits or your lures out to that darker bluer water just inside the wave break on the back bank to try to hook up to some of those fish attacking the bait. On picture six we've got what I call the shadow effect and that's where you, at places like Fraser Island where you've got some very high sand dunes those sand dunes as the sun goes down can throw the shadows onto the gutters which will bring the fish on earlier than sunnier gutters nearby and that's a great option for tailor in winter. So picture seven is an aerial view from the plane of a very long deep gutter close to shore as well as two big rips at the back both a southerly and a northerly rip. Now obviously they're very dangerous for swimmers but for fish they're a great option because they're an entry point into the gutter and then an exit point down further. So where it'd be fishing in this gutter is between the two rips um, as the uh, sun starts to go down or early in the morning. So great option. So picture eight is a very obvious sandbank where it drops off into deeper water uh, in closer to shore and in the two red circles there you can just make out there were schools of fish traveling along that sandbank. Now those sandbanks can be a great option where fish are moving between gutters during the day so if you can at low tide try to cast your lures out there to them or alternatively there's not enough water at low on a neap or lower high tide, again, you can try to cast out there. So there you go, folks. A few uh, various um, gutters, which um, I hope I've described to help you fish them a bit better. Cheers.